Hello everyone, welcome to your no-nonsense guide on how to play the fried liver attack. This is a fantastic attacking opening for beginners all the way to master level players, uh, and I'm not only going to give you all of the main lines, but I will also give you all of the side lines that you will face occasionally. Um, Timestamps for all the variations are in the description, and let's get started. So, it comes after pawn to e4, black plays pawn to e5, and now we play knight to f3. Attack their e-pawn, black will play knight to c6, defending it, and now we play the move bishop to c4. This is the Italian game, we are targeting the f7 pawn here, and the move that black has to play here to allow us to play the fried liver attack is knight to f6, the two knights defense. And the reason they have to play this is that now the queen no longer sees a g5 square, so we can play the move knight to g5. And this is not the fried liver attack officially just yet, this is the knight attack, but it will be the fried liver attack in just a couple of moves. So, with knight to g5, we are attacking the f7 pawn with our knight and our bishop, so if they play a move like pawn to h6, then we can just capture it, fork their queen, fork their rook, we are winning on move 5. So, because of that, most people here will play the move pawn to d5. Most people, they have some sidelines that we'll look at afterwards, but... Most people will play this move, uh, attacking our bishop, blocking out our bishop from seeing the f7 pawn for our knight. Uh, and if they do this, then we'll capture with our pawn. And the mistake that black can make here is knight takes on d5. And even though this move is extremely common, especially at beginner levels, it is actually kind of a mistake because of the very nice sacrifice knight takes on f7, and this is now where the fried liver attack officially commences. So, we play knight takes on f7, we fork the queen, and we fork the rook, and they're pretty much forced to capture here, and now we see the idea of this with queen to f3. We are checking their king and attacking their knight in the center, so on the next move we are always going to capture the knight, unless they play king to e6. This is the main line, I will get more into this just in a second, uh, they're defending their knight with their king, uh, but if they play anything else in that, like um, queen to f6, or king here, or king here, or whatever, we are simply going to capture the knight in center, like king d8, we just capture the knight in the center, now we are up a pawn, black cannot castle, um, we are actually threatening checkmate here, so if they play knight to d4, uh, attacking our queen and attacking this uh, fork here, we can just go to f7 with checkmate, I won a lot of games like this when I was a beginner, um, I mean yeah, but if they don't fall for that, uh, the knight to d4 checkmate, you just have a fantastic position, and that is just really good, and a nice little bonus here, if they play king to g8, this is a horrible move, because after queen takes on d5, or bishop takes, uh, black is actually just getting checkmated here. Their king is completely stuck. I mean, they can trade queens, but that just delays it for one move. They can play bishop b6. We just capture, checkmate. So, like I mentioned earlier, king to e6, uh, defending their knight like this is the only good move here, and it is the main line, but black stills to be extremely careful here. Uh, we cannot capture... Because after black just takes back, uh, we are actually just down a piece here and we have little to no compensation. Instead, we want to play the move knight to c3. Black cannot trade here because uh, it is being pinned, and we are attacking uh, their knight once again. So they only have two moves here, those being knight to b4, defending their knight like this, which is a lot better than the alternative, and the alternative that is pretty bad is knight to e7. This is the Polario defense, not the one that you're familiar with. And I'll just get this out of the way real quick, since it is uh, really bad. Um, the reason it's bad is that it's just way too passive. It blocks out their bishop, it blocks out their queen, and we can just strike in the center, pawn to d4 immediately, and we are borderline winning here. Um, if black captures, this is actually a blunder, because after knight takes on d5, knight takes, and now queen to e4, their knight is simply going to be lost, because um, if king here, we just capture it, and this actually gets checkmated, because after here, bishop g5, King moves, queen f7, checkmate, uh, and if they move their king away, like um, king f6, then we also just capture it, and we're just basically just completely winning here, so this is just terrible for them, and if they do not capture and fall into that trap, we're simply going to capture them, we'll castle, and we just uh, maintain a very good and aggressive position. So, knight to e7 is uh, no good, the much better move here is knight to b4, defending their knight to like this, 
And if they do this, then we have to be a little careful here. We can't just play pawn a free and see that we get their knight away and we're going to win this on the next move. Because after knight takes on c2, we are getting forked here and this is just no good for us. Instead, you want to play the move just castles here. Get your king safe and out of the way. Prepare your rook to come into the battle. Uh, now they cannot capture on c2 because um, it is no longer a check. So we can actually just capture their knight here because uh, the knight on b4 needs to stay there to um, defend it. And Block's only good move here is pawn c6. Defending their knight in the center. And Black's uh, plan here is to run their king to d7 into c7 and just try to get safe here and consolidate their um, material advantage. And if they play this, this kind of gets out of the realm of um, opening theory into an actual game. But just know, according to the engine, white is still better here even though we are down a piece. And the move you want to remember here is pawn d4. Striking in the center, um, if they capture, then rook to e1 and then I mean, they just get murdered here. Um, and if they don't capture, you are going to capture them, and it's just fantastic for us. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know for the um, fried liver attack. But now let's look at their um, much better response, which is all the way back here. Instead of taking on d5 in this position and allowing knight takes on f7, all this fried liver nonsense, you are going to play the move, or actually, sorry, black plays the move here, knight to a5. This is the Polario defense, the uh, much better one, attacking our bishop here, and the idea is that black is going to get a position where they're down one pawn, however they have a lot more development and an initiative for that pawn, but I think I found a really good setup that um, is really really challenging against black. And that is to play bishop to b5 check here, nothing special so far, check their king, oh sorry not like that, check their king, they play with pawn to c6, we capture, they capture back. And now the odd move here that I'm going to recommend is bishop to d3. And at first glance, this move probably looks really weird. And if it doesn't, it probably should look weird. Because our bishop, um, before developing our pawn, is really bad. Because now our pawn uh, just can never move. And our bishop here is completely stuck, which is kind of bad. But the idea of this is that we are controlling the e4 square, which in this um, main line here is extremely important, and so much of black's play here revolves around having control of this. So the main line here goes knight to d5, uh, attacking our knight with their queen, but real quick, the most popular move here when I was researching on the uh, Lee Chess database is actually pawn to h6, which is a pretty big mistake because after knight to e4, that's the advantage of putting our bishop on d3 and controlling this, black just has a pretty mediocre position. I mean, they can capture. I mean, we just capture back after something like bishop to c5 and castles. Black just does not have nearly enough compensation for the pawn. And, um, yes, yeah, so that's a good thing to keep in mind. But if they don't play that, if they play knight to d5, main line, attacking our knight, then we're simply going to want to drop it back to f3. And before this move would have gotten into a lot of complications because black would have pawn to e5, but now that our bishop is on d3 and controls it, um, that is just not, you know, it, it doesn't work. Uh, and also, I think I said pawn to e5 instead of pawn to e4, just ignore that. Um, black's main move here is bishop to d6, defending the pawn like this. If they do this, then we will castle. And um, black's best move here is to simply castle as well. Uh, and I'll, get, I'll look uh, more into this in just a moment, but a little trap here. The lot of people here play pawn to a5. I actually got this in a game just yesterday, so I mean, if it happens to me, it'll probably happen to you. Because it looks like black is now going to get pawn to e4 and strike in the center, and it's really good. However, we just completely win here with knight takes on e5. Um, kind of surprising move, but after black takes back, now simply rook to e1, pinning the bishop here, and we're just going to win it back after like queen f6 and queen to e2. And we're just going to end up winning the bishop back and end up being two, up, um, two entire pawns. Just being, I mean, almost completely winning according to the engine. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's a nice little trap to keep in mind. But like I was saying, after castles, if they castle as well, then we'll simply go rook to e1 here. And the idea is to now drop this bishop back to f1. Like for example, um, if black plays like bishop g4 here, then you want to play the move 
bishop back to f1. Or maybe not this exact variation, but something like this. And we put the bishop on f1. Now we will play pawn d3 on the next move, put our bishop, um, or develop our bishop out, develop our knight, and we just have a good position, and black just does not have a ton of compensation for the pawn. Alright, so those are the two most common and uh, probably most important lines, but now let's get into some of the less common and more objectively dubious sidelines. The first one I'm going to look at is um, all the way back here in this position. Instead of playing pawn to d5, black plays bishop to c5. This is the Traxler counterattack, and at first glance it looks uh, insane, because can't we just take on f7, uh, fork the queen, fork the rook, and black's just completely lost here? The answer in this specific variation is actually no, because now black plays, bishop takes on f2, we will take back, and after something like knight takes on e4, I'm, I'm not qualified enough to tell you what is going on in this position and all the madness and all the complications. Instead, I'm going to recommend a much more simple setup, which is actually bishop takes on f7 instead of knight takes. So, we win the pawn, now black will run their king up to e7 so they cannot castle, and here, you are simply going to want to um, back your bishop up all the way to b3. And now we have a very simple setup, but you are going to want to try and counter um, black's counterplay. So, black will play rook to f8. We will play pawn to d3. Black plays pawn to d6. And here, you have a very important move. I want you to play pawn to h3. And this move might look kind of odd. Shouldn't it be better to uh, develop a piece? The answer here is no. Because the reason we play pawn to h3 is that now if black plays pawn to h6 and kicks our knight away, they cannot play um, bishop to g4 here uh, because our pawn protects it. And bishop to g4 um, pinning our knight to our queen is one of the biggest sources of counterplay in the Traxler, so it's really good that we prevent that. So because of that, pawn to h6 isn't very good here, instead queen to e8 with the idea of rotating the queen to here is a lot better of an idea, and here we are going to play a kind of mysterious move, knight back to f3. Here, before the queen even attacks our knight or anything, it might look really odd and bad, but the reason for that is that our golden square for a knight in this position is not on g5, but it's also not on f3, it's actually on h4, which might make you think at first, but the idea is that after knight back to f3 and queen to g6, now we put our knight on h4. We attack the queen, and we defend this pawn, and the queen going to g6 is the entire idea of this queen to e8 uh, reroute in the first place, so by preventing this, this makes it a whole lot worse. Uh, if they play queen h5, then we can just trade queens here. I mean, we're up a pawn. This is just very good for us after, um, like, bishop to g5 check and whatnot. Um... And if they do not trade queens, if instead they drop their queen back to e8, then simply knight to c3 here. Finish our development, and we just keep our knight on h4. We don't need to move it. Uh, like I said, this is the golden square for the knight. And here, I believe you just have avoided a lot of the counterplay of the Traxler, and black is starting to have some serious trouble coming up with the um, compensation for the lost pawn and their king on e7. So that's why what I um, recommend against the Traxler, but there's also one other pretty dubious sideline here, which is knight takes on e4. Just give yourself a second, look at that move, this is the uh, Ponziani Steinitez Gambit, and it might look really bad at first, and objectively it is, but you have to know exactly what you're doing. You cannot capture the knight. Because then black plays pawn to d5, attacking our knight, or <laughs> not our knight, attacking our bishop, attacking our knight, and we're actually just kind of losing here. And we also cannot play knight takes on f7. Because once again, even though we are forking their queen and rook, black has queen to h5 here, attacking our f7 pawn with a checkmate fret. And once again, we're just not really equipped to um, fully defend this, and this just isn't that good. Instead, you want to play the move. Bishop takes on f7. Same thing in both the Traxler and the um, Ponzani Steinitez, which this is. We take on f7, king moves up, and this is worse than the Traxler because the king on e7 uh, blocks out the bishop and they've just less development here. And here you want to play the move, pawn to d3. Attacking their knight, uh, they certainly cannot trade, 
because then we take back of our bishop now, and we just win their queen here with a skewer, that's obviously really bad, and um, because of that, black's only move here that doesn't lose on the spot is knight to f6, and if they play that, then you just want to back your bishop up to b3, and after something like pawn to d5, yeah, it looks like black gets a big center, but if I'm honest, it just doesn't really matter. We can just castle here. We have a safe position. We are up upon black's king is really bad on e7 because it is uh, blocked out or it's blocking out to the bishop. Um, keep in mind this little um, pawn breakthrough, pawn to c4 here is always good. And uh, yeah, this is just not really that good for a uh, black. Now let's look at the last two um, sort of sister sidelines, and that is the Fritz variation and the Yulvastad variation. And the reason I'm saying they're sister sidelines is that um, if black plays a main line, they actually transpose into each other. And that is back here, instead of capturing and instead of playing knight to a5, they will play knight to d4. This the Fritz variation, I will look at it first, and then we'll look at the Yulvastad variation, which is pawn to b5 here, which just is utterly ridiculous. Um, but after knight to d4, here we want to play the move pawn to c3. Just get their knight out of the center, and the main move here for black is to play pawn to b5. Attacking our bishop, uh, defended by their knight, and if they play this, uh, excuse me, we want to play the move bishop back to f1. This is the only move to retain our advantage, and it might look a bit odd, but the idea of it is that now if black ever takes on um, d5, the g2 pawn is defended, which is actually very important. And the main line here now goes um, either knight takes on d5 or knight to f5. Knight to f5 is worse because now we take on b5 of check. Black has to block. We take. Black takes back. And we're up two pawns here, so we can give this pawn up as tribute. And here we simply just castle, and we just have a good position. We're going to be up a pawn, and black just doesn't have very much compensation for the uh, lost pawn they have here. So because of that, knight to f5 isn't very good. But the main line here is knight takes on d5. Sacrificing this knight here, because um, after we capture, they will take our knight here on g5. And here... Now we want to take on b5 uh, with check. Black will move their king over. And now we simply castle. Get our king safe. And even though the black queen is up staring right at us, we're actually completely safe here. But you do have to know a couple of moves that I will teach you right now. And uh, that is black will play bishop to b7, targeting the uh, g2 pawn. And here you're going to play the move queen to f3 which is the only move to retain any advantage. And it looks a little surprising. We're getting right in the way of the bishop, but right now they cannot actually move their knight because then we would just capture the bishop here. So because of that, people will play rook to b8. Defend their bishop, and here you are going to play a kind of surprising move, taking on e5. And that might look kind of odd because doesn't black get this discovery now, wouldn't it be better to just develop a piece or get our king safer or blah blah blah. This is the best move. And the idea is that after black plays knight to e3, a kind of tricky little move, attacking our queen, um, they, we cannot capture the knight because then queen takes g2, we get checkmated. So here we're going to play the move queen to h3. And if you were thinking, well, don't you just lose a rook here? You got tricked because now, surprise, checkmate, queen d7. Black has checkmated. So they can't capture our rook. Instead, they will play queen to g2, sacrificing their queen. Or not actually sacrificing, because after we take, black will take back, and it is actually defended by the bishop. However, here, we still are up a pawn, and we'll just solidify our center with pawn to d4. And we just have a good position here. Uh, this knight is kind of stuck on g2. And uh, we're not completely winning here, but we're definitely better. We're up a pawn. We have a strong center. And this is just a good position. And now let's look at the Yulvastad variation, which is the kind of sister to this, as I said earlier. And that is, instead of playing knight to d4 immediately, instead playing pawn to b5. And the idea of this is that if we capture... Then now black takes on d5, um, attacking our bishop, uh, sorry, attacking our bishop, attacking our g2 pawn, and this is not very good for us. Instead, 
you want to play the move bishop back to f1 here. That way, this pawn is now defended. So, the main move here is knight to d4. Or, wait, actually, sorry, knight to d4 here, not knight captures d5. Uh, but if they play queen takes on d5, because this pawn is defended by our bishop... Oh my god, I can't draw arrows right now. Because this pawn is defended by our bishop, we can simply play knight to c3, queen slides over, and now we take on a5, and we're just up a pawn here, and this is just a pretty bad position for black. Uh... Yeah, yeah, something like bishop to d7 and castles, we just have a good position. Uh, so because of that, the main move is knight to d4, hopping into the center, and if they do this, then after pawn to c3, we have actually completely transposed into the other line. Uh, and after knight takes on d5 here, and uh, we take, queen takes, this transposes into the other line. Uh, one thing you do want to know is that if they take on d5 immediately here, taking on d5, this is actually bad because of bishop takes on b5 now. And the difference is their queen cannot go to d5 and attack our bishop and our g2 pawn because their knight is stuck on that square. Uh, they cannot capture on g5, obviously, because after uh, they capture here, we just take this and we win their um, knight in the center. We're just up an entire piece here. That's obviously very bad. Um, but if they don't fall for that, if instead they play like bishop to b7, then you can just play like pawn d3 here, defend your knight like this, and we just have a good position where we're once again up a pawn. Alright, so that is your entire guide on how to play the fry liver attack. Uh, this video took some time to make, it took a lot of uh, researching and a lot of time to record and put together and all of that, but you can make it all worth it if you subscribe and like this video, uh, comment if you want to tell me that you really enjoyed it, and uh, thank you so much for watching, have a fantastic day.